Hi, everybody. Um, we're going to wait a couple of minutes before um, we get started, but I just um, welcome. This is a webinar for iNaturalist How To and a Scavenger Hunt um, handout that hopefully came in your email to get into this program. Um, and if it didn't, I will definitely email it to you guys after the program is done. Um, but I'm Emma Masaglia, and I'm from the Leon County Public Library. Um, and we have Mark Tansig and Rachel Mathis here um, with us, as well as Britton Ellis from the Public Library. So hi, guys. Um, we're going to give it a couple more minutes before I introduce everyone. All right. And um, Maritza, I will definitely send out that handout to everybody that is um, an attendee of this program after um, the program is complete. Sorry about that. I, <laughs> I apologize. That was amazing, Emmeline. That was, uh, this is Emmeline's <laughs> artwork on the <laughs> and behind me and on the uh, scavenger hunt sheet. That's really cool. Well, thank you. <laughs> are, those, are those gulf fritillaries beside Mark's, Mark's head there? Um, yeah, they're um, a butterfly of some type. It's I the ones that are like. I and look closer, but that's probably not. <laughs> the they're the butterflies that kind of look like monarchs, but they're like browner. Mm. Um, Is it the the ones that like are? There's the not the queen. The queens look just like them. Yeah, uh, they're like littler and browner. I think they're golf fritillaries. Uh, they look that, like. That name sounds familiar. Like when I was looking them up and looking at reference images. <laughs> I, I caught a couple of uh, monarchs on my front lawn uh, that were stuck together. So hopefully there's going to be some baby monarchs. <laughs> Yay, uh -oh. that's excellent. Hey, okay, well, um, looks like we have 17 people here right now. Um, so I guess w I will go ahead and start introducing everyone um, before we actually start the program. Um, and I'm Emma Masaglia from the Leon County Public Library. Um, I'm a computer support technician and I love nature, but I don't know a whole lot about it. That's why we have our two wonderful um, uh, people from the UFI FAS Extension Office. Um, so uh, Mark Tansig um, has been the commercial and residential horticultural extension agent at the UFI FAS Leon County Extension Office since 2016. In his role, Mark shares research-based best practices for sustainable landscape management with green industry professionals and residential homeowners. Mark also coordinates the Leon County Master Gardener Volunteer Program, which the library uses to help us get our seeds ready to go for our seed library stuff. Um, Mark has lived in Tallahassee since 20, to 2003, originally from West Palm Beach. He enjoys living in Tallahassee with his wife, two kids, dogs, flock of chickens and herd of worms. <laughs> Prior to joining UFI FAST, Mark worked for Leon County's Public Works Department for six years and in Growth and Environmental Management Department for three years. His first job in Tallahassee was a field biologist with Florida Natural Areas Inventory. Mark graduated from the University of Florida, no surprise there, <laughs> with a bachelor's degree in botany in 2002 and is currently working on a master's degree in soil and water science at UF. Ooh, so welcome, I should give Mark. you the short version, Emma. <laughs> well, you know, I, it's good to know um, all the things that you guys are capable of, of, of <laughs> knowing and doing. <laughs> and um, Rachel is the horticultural program assistant for UFI FAST, Leon County Extension, and she received her master's of fine art from Florida State University in 2018. Ooh fellow graduate, um, with a focus in, on environmental art. After working at a local nursery in grad school, she joined UFI FAST, Leon County Extension, to help further educate the citizens of Leon County about plants and the environment around us. Rachel leads the 4-H Horticulture Club, teaching youth the basics of botany, taxonomy, and relationships between plants and animals. Her favorite kinds of plants are those she can eat or that provide food <laughs> to animals, which is awesome. <laughs> I love that. So um, if you are in attendance at the program, um, you're, you'll be muted and the video will be turned off. Um, but if you have any questions during the course of the presentations, um, please do not hesitate to put them in the chat. Um, we will be monitoring the chat and we will ask the questions that, um, that you have at the end of the presentation. Um, this program will be recorded and made available on the Leroy Collins Leon County Public Library website and on our YouTube. Um, and 
after the program ends and you start doing your scavenger hunts at home, um, the, please tag us on our Facebooks and Instagrams at um, Leland, the Leland County Library and the Leland County Extension Office um, and show what you found and um, the pictures that you take. Um, so without further ado, here is Mark to teach okay. you guys about iNat the iNaturalist app and the Seek app. Yes, and do we have any do we have any small children with us in the audience? I guess you guys can put it in the chat screen, but uh, hopefully you do. Uh, and hopefully after this, you will want to you know go outside and uh, check some things out out in the backyard. So uh, that's what we're hoping. Um, okay, let's see here. Some more. This was just some more Zoom tips. I think because this is the webinar, we don't have to worry too much about this. But especially know where the chat little toolbar is, and type into the chat screen if you got a question. And then uh, in this section, the, the speaker view or gallery view, you can change your little view settings up in the top right to um, get it just how you like it. So um, there's some more Zoom tips. We've had a steep learning curve in you know, how to do Zoom presentations. So we've been learning a lot here. Okay, so we're gonna, yeah, we're talking about iNaturalist and really talking about exploring a lot of our local biodiversity with iNaturalist. So when you all see this photo, uh, this is Gary Knight. Uh, I, he was my director at Florida Natural Areas Inventory when I first moved to town. Uh, this is his photo. And when you see this photo, do you think, wow, this is very diverse? Uh, I can't see, you know, in, a, in, in person, we would go back and forth. I can't see your chats right now, but uh, most folks might just think this looks like pine trees and some grass. Uh, this is actually one of, you know, that grass layer down there is actually one of the most diverse herbaceous ecosystems, you know, in the United States. So uh, when you're driving by all those pine trees, and you're like, oh, Florida's boring, it's just flat and a bunch of pine trees. Uh, you know, just know that there's a whole lot going on down there that uh, many of us are not aware of. And that's hopefully what we're going to talk about today and help you think of ways where you can go out and learn you know, what some of those species are. Uh, she introduced me very well. Uh, here's the office where we work and we are now opening back up. I'm here about three days a week, uh, but here's our contact information. Like she said, I help people with all sorts of lawn and landscape questions. Uh, myself with Rachel and the Leon County Master Gardener volunteers, uh, they maintain the beautiful gardens around the building and also help with all sorts of education and outreach throughout the community related to landscape best practices, Florida friendly landscaping. Um, so I still need to add some more here, Rachel. I know she's got us on Instagram, Twitter, uh, there's YouTube channel now. So this needs to be updated, but this is how you get a hold of us. Here's what we're gonna talk about. Um, biodiversity, biodiversity, biodiversity. I love biodiversity. And we're gonna talk about what that means, why it's important, what are some of the threats. We're gonna go over our region's biodiversity and then some apps that you can use to identify all that diversity around you. Uh, we'll talk about exploring your backyard, some local parks, and how to share those observations, um, or encourage you to share, just to, uh, you know, once we share things and we're really enthusiastic about sharing, we usually get other people motivated to do the same, so we want to encourage you to do that. And then some actions that you can take to help uh, protect and restore biodiversity. So I don't know if you knew this, you know, it's, you might think, why did they choose a Friday, um, you know, to uh, have this program? Well, it had to do a little bit with the webinar setup uh, and the busy calendar of the library, but today is World Environment Day. Did you, I don't know if you guys knew that, but it's World Environment Day. Uh, this is something that the UN does every year, and this year's theme is biodiversity. So we kind of wanted to touch on biodiversity and how to use iNaturalist. Uh, there's some really great links, uh, and I believe I provided the link to this for you in the end here, but there's a lot of good information on this um, Time for Nature website, World Environment Day website. Uh, check that out, it's pretty great. So what is biodiversity? Um, you know, biodiversity is, you know, you break that down, biological diversity, and it's just all the variability of living things that make up life on this amazing planet Earth. So 
there is the I think it's called the pale blue dot. Uh, it's a pat. It's a book I believe by Carl Sagan, and there's a passage in it that talks about, or it's a passage of a book. I can't exactly remember. I know I've read the passage. I don't. I haven't read the whole book, but it's uh, you know it's zoomed out further than this photo here and pointing to this little blue dot that is Earth, and how special that it is that you know with a universe that's you know I don't know thousands millions of light years across. Um, this is the only little spot in the whole place that we know that uh, hosts life. And we, uh, far, so far, what we know is there's at least 8 million or so different species of organism, uh, plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, you know, things we can see, things we can't see uh, that live here. Um, so these things are all very, very special. Um, uh, biodiversity does also encompass those ecosystems that, um, you know, kind of support and uh, that those organisms kind of create these various ecosystems that they house them, right? Oceans, forests, mountains, deserts, coral reefs, um, as well as the genetic diversity found among them. It's really important to think about how all these uh, species, you know, there's a, there's, there's, there's a need for them on this planet. They're here for a reason. Uh, in some way, they're useful to us. Um, and so it's pretty important. And here's the link here to this uh, World Environment Day toolkit. Uh, a lot of some of this information came from there. Uh, this was a really, um, they have a really good website. So check that out. Why is biodiversity important? Well, again, it's our natural and cultural resource. So right, all these living things around us, um, just like us, they're an organism that lives on this, you know, amazing planet Earth. And so really just because of that, I kind of feel like they deserve our respect and uh, protection uh, and I guess reverence. Uh, environmental resiliency, you know, this is uh, a really good reason to encourage and protect biodiversity. So anytime there's any kind of hurricane, flood, fire, uh, disease outbreak, um, pest outbreak of some type, the more biodiverse your environment is, uh, your ecosystem, your yard, your garden plot, uh, you know, the more biodiverse it is, the more resilient it will be, the more able it will be able to bounce back from that um, disturbance. And then, you know, all of these organisms, again, even the things we can't see that um, make up those 8 million species, uh, they provide us with vital ecosystem services. So, uh, you know, many of these services that are basically, you know, we need them to survive are provided by these things. And a lot of times we're not actually paying, you know, they just are provided to us for free. So these supporting services, these regulating services, provisioning and cultural services, uh, again, things we don't tend to think about, pretty much take them for granted, uh, but without them, uh, our lives wouldn't be possible either. So I just have a couple pictures, you know, whether it's um, these chickadees that are pulling off uh, pests from your garden or your fruit trees to wetlands that filter stormwater runoff, um, recharge aquifers. Uh, I grew up in West Palm Beach, like was mentioned earlier, and you know, the Everglades in South Florida, there's this, you know, heavily kind of, uh, this balance between Lake Okeechobee and how much is released to the Everglades, you know, that, that big source of fresh water in South Florida provides drinking water to millions and millions of people. So um, it's usually not reflected in your water bill. Um, the pollination services so over there that you see the thistle, the mo most people uh, consider thistle a terrible weed, but you can see the bumblebee loves it. And then that picture on the bottom right, that, uh, you know, these pollination services, that's what your produce um, section of the market would look like uh, without bees to pollinate your crops. And then soil. So I love soil. Uh, she mentioned I'm getting a master's degree in soil and water science. I think soil is pretty amazing. Uh, soil and all the critters that live in the soil. Uh, without them, again, it takes all the little small things to work uh, together to make it possible for the caterpillar in the bird's mouth, to make it possible for the bird, and all those things kind of make it possible for us to uh, exist on this planet. Provisioning services, so uh, all these, you know, species, this, this makes up biodiversity on earth, you know, that gives us lumber for our homes. These are kind of like these really uh, concrete things we can uh, think about because we often pay for them. Um, 
again, lumber for homes, clothing, right? Cotton, uh, silk, um, whatever. Uh, none, none of your plastic stuff, but you know, most of our clothing uh, in the past, all of our clothing was made of plant material. Um, you also have medicines. So right there on the top, that's penicillin mold. So uh, I don't know if any of you have taken penicillin. It's one of the most commonly used antibiotics uh, that comes from fungus. So, uh, you know, and the plant there on the right, that's cinchona. That is the uh, source of quinine, which quinine has been used to treat millions for malaria. Uh, and if you can imagine, there's all these species that we have not um, discovered even, right? And so what is the potential? What, are, what other medicines are kind of hiding out in nature that we don't even know about? And if we don't protect our biodiversity, you know, we may lose species um, that could be helpful to us um, in other ways. And then of course, food, right? That's an easy one, right? Plants, animals, biodiversity, they provide us with food. And then cultural services, right? So whether it be recreation, whether it be art, there's some Georgia O'Keeffe, all you botanists, I know you love Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, there's some highwaymen painting, right? Uh, this you know shows up in our art. I had to put Groot in there because Groot is just so cute. Uh, uh, ho hopefully you all know who Groot is. Uh, I really like Groot. Um, plants show up and you know all these these organisms these living beings you know part of earth they show up in our literature our mythology um, so there's narcissist uh, or there's narcissist where the word narcissist comes from that is based off the beautiful daffodil plant right the narcissist that you could just stare at for hours and that's kind of where that myth comes from and the names uh, peace lilies if you've been to a funeral you've probably had a probably seen peace lilies there, um, big large live oaks in the south, right? So that's something when you go away for a while and you come back to Tallahassee, when you start hitting that, those bands of those big, huge live oaks with Spanish moss all over them, you kind of like know your home, right? They let you know that you're at your home. And then just the therapeutic effects that nature gives us, right? Being out amongst nature um, is good for us. So uh, I'll come back to that a little bit later too. You know, what are the threats to biodiversity? Well, there's, uh, no matter what you look at, if there's any kind of impact on some sort of insect, plant, mammal, reptile, they all come back to habitat loss um, due to land use change. So uh, that picture there on the right, that's the Amazon rainforest with um, encroaching agriculture. I don't want to bum you guys out, so we'll, we'll kind of go over this really quickly, but just know that there are a lot of threats to biodiversity, including um, the biggest one being habitat loss due to land use change, but also over-exploitation of the resources, uh, whether it be logging, whether it be overfishing. Of course, there's pollution from all the, the things that we put into the environment, invasive exotic species, which we talk about a lot here, uh, and of course, climate change. But did you know that the Big Bend region of Florida is a biodiversity hotspot. Again, I wish I was in person with you all so we could kind of, I could see what you guys, how do you respond, uh, but we live in an amazing place. Um, it just, it's really amazing. Uh, so there's gonna be a bunch of maps coming. I love maps, I tried to have the thin some out so I didn't go so long. Mark, uh, your, your microphone is a little um, sticky. It's like, it sounds a little, sh uh, patchy or something. It says I'm muted. Oh no, you're good. Oh, unmute yourself. Are you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'll try to, I'll try to, Don't well hopefully around. it'll work. Yeah. Uh, so uh, biodiversity, we are in the biodiversity hotspot. So right here, um, this is from the map, uh, this is the Biota of North America program. And you can see that uh, the Big Bend region, we're a whole different color than the rest of the country, right? So uh, there's a couple little spots over in California, but we are, you know, in this, this Apalachicola endemism zone. So we have just, uh, you know, what this map is trying to show you is the, the number of plants, you know, per 10,000 kilometers square there. So you can see that we are a, a just a rich, rich hotspot of these uh, plants. But it's not just plants. 
uh, well, this is, this is another plant one. Sorry, I'm a plant guy. So plant families, again, you can see where the plant family diversity um, right here in Florida, right? Right in that Big Bend region, kind of skirting the East Coast. But the highest diversity of plant families is right here in North Florida, pretty much. But then when we go to, oh, well, here's more plants. So there's animals coming up, I promise. Uh, tree diversity, look at that. The hotspot again ends up right there in the Big Bend region. Mammal endemics, so just to help uh, define endemics, those are uh, species that are found nowhere else um, in the world. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, so mammal endemics, you can see again, we are in the, the most diverse range for those. Amphibian diversity, again, we're, there we are. Bird endemics. Um, Bird, I don't know how they really, uh, again, I'm a plant guy, bird endemics. Uh, birds move around, so I'm not sure if these are the only places you can see them in the world or if they are, you know, they're migratory and this is the only place you can see them in the U.S. I wasn't sure about this one, but again, it shows that we are, we have a lot of diversity of birds. Here's reptiles, again, right there, North Florida, that um, Gulf Coast region. Here's showing more, this is uh, endemic plants. And so these plants, these are plants that have only a range of about 75 by 75 miles. And again, you can see that um, Big Bend region, a couple of spots in California and South Florida are the, the hot spots for these and uh, South Texas, um, that little panhandle down there, Texas. That's not the pan, is that, that's not the panhandle, Texas. That's like the Rio Grande area down there. Uh, and then you have, I threw this one in there too, carnivorous plants. So again, you can see where uh, carnivorous plants, we have a ton. So, you know, lots and lots and lots of biodiversity, right? So there's an amazing amount of biodiversity uh, in our region. Real scratchy there. Real scratchy. Let me, um, not sure what's going on. Wonder if it's the, uh, the animation in the slide. I don't know. Um, Lots of biodiversity. So how are you ever to learn all these things? Around you? you know, you just found out you live in a biological uh, biodiversity hotspot. So, you know, we're all carrying phones around. Uh, so why not use some of that technology then um, work smarter, not harder. Uh, we're going to talk about and focus on iNaturalist and Seek. <clears throat> They're, those are just two of many apps that can help, but they are really great for some other reasons that we'll discuss. Um, other sources of information would be Facebook groups and social media, other social media outlets. I know there's a bunch of native plant groups, plants of North Florida groups, where you can just post a picture and they'll, you know, they'll help you out. Of course, there's books. We're, we're partnering with the library here, and I think Emmeline's going to talk about some books that they have available at the library to help with this field, field books. You know, back when I was uh, getting started, we didn't have these things. So it was all about lots of field books. So I keep my field book right here by my desk. So uh, you can't see it. Oh, anyway, still use a lot of books, but these the technology is pretty great. And field trips with local experts is a really great way to do it. And um, you know we don't do a whole lot of that at the extension office as far as field trips. We do a lot with our master gardener volunteers. Uh, and take them out and see places. But the Florida Native Plant Society uh, is a really good place. The Magnolia chapter is your local chapter and they do some amazing field trips when you know global pandemics aren't occurring uh, and get you out in the field. And you're, you know, you could go out with uh, Dr. Lauren Anderson, um, longtime FSU professor at Botany, and he loves going on field trips and talking to people about plants. So iNaturalist. Um, this is a free app that you can get, and here's the website. The very cool thing about iNaturalist is it uses AI and your location to help you figure out what a plant is. And we're gonna run through what it looks like on your phone. But basically you can take a picture of a phone, a, take a picture of a plant or insect, a bird, you can get it, frog, um, lichen, even, you know, fungus. Uh, and it uses your location and the magic of AI to help you figure out what it is. Um, in addition to that, what happens is someone behind you, an expert in a particular kingdom or you know, group of whatever organisms you're dealing with, someone comes behind you and uh, verifies it. 
once you once enough people have verified your identification uh, then it is actually considered research grade and scientists actually use this throughout the world to help do research uh, so not only are you you know figuring out what this plant is or this ant or you know butterfly is but it is actually helping uh, scientists who study those organisms collect more data right so these scientists can't be everywhere all the time this is basically a form of citizen science that empowers you in your own yard to um, help with science. It's pretty amazing. And so you can see there's uh, two and a half million users, uh, almost 300,000 different species have been observed using iNaturalist. So how does it work? Um, you would go to your, uh, your phone's uh, app store, uh, look up iNaturalist and here it is there, it's, it's free. Uh, when you open it up, this is what it looks like on your phone. Now, I have an Apple phone, so this is what it looks like on an iPhone. Now, this is kind of what pops up when you um, open your screen. It's kind of on this in this me uh, section of the app. Um, and I think what I'm going to do first is we're going to explore first. So uh, open it up. You won't have anything in here uh, as far as observations because you just started, but explore will still work for you. Uh, when you hit explore, what will happen is a, a map will pop up. And this is actually, you can you know, move the map all around. Usually it's gonna zoom into where you are, but then you can move uh, and scroll through and find the particular location that you're interested in. I've scrolled over to the uh, UFI Fis Leon County Extension Office. Uh, we're on Paul Russell and Xyla Road. And you can then start selecting, you know, well, what did they find there? So uh, I'm going to click on this little blue guy here. And it turns out that that was me and I got a Eastern glass lizard um, uh, on the edge of the property over there. So when you're in Explore, you can go find out, um, you know, what, what have other people seen? What could I potentially see when I go to this site? Uh, the cool thing is then you can start clicking on more information about this eastern glass lizard and what is the range. And so uh, when you're thinking of how this is used for science, you see those little outliers of, of blue circles kind of to the northern edge of it, this glass lizard's range. Uh, those are really great for scientists to know what is actually the, the range of this thing. Where is this thing being found? Is it expanding its range? You know, um, climate change, things are getting warmer, things are moving north. Uh, and so this is a really great way for scientists to use the power of all the people to um, help with research. Uh, if you want to observe, so this is where we're going to actually take a picture and try to identify something. Uh, you're gonna click on your little observe button down here. And what it's gonna do is it's going to open up your uh, camera. So you do have to allow access to your camera when you uh, download the app. And this is something I found in the backyard and uh, I took a picture of. So what comes up next, you, uh, you basically hit the little green button that takes the shot. You can also, if you hit the, uh, the little file, um, the little, little, this little thing, I don't know, I hope you guys see my cursor, but the little thing to the right of the green button, you can actually bring in photos. So say you are in the national forest and you don't have cell reception, um, you can take a bunch of pictures, you can come back to your house later uh, and input those you know, into, the, into the iNaturalist app. Once you take your photo, uh, it shows up at the very top. And then it says, what did you see? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on what did you see? And in this case, it told me, which is it's, I'm always amazed as a botanist that I can take a picture of a leaf in a very obscure angle and no flower. And this thing picks it up almost every time. It's pretty amazing. In this case, it gives you this warning. We're not confident enough to make a recommendation, but here's the top 10 suggestions, right? So you can actually click on these suggestions and get more pictures and get a range map to kind of help you figure out, is that really what it is? Uh, in this case, it didn't pop up. I knew what this was, but it didn't uh, show up. So you can click in the lookup species by name. And what'll happen there is you can just, you just start typing. And I knew this was a polyphemus moth, uh, cocoon. So I typed that in there, polyphemus moth pops up. Uh, I, hit, I hit good job, this is what it is. Uh, I'm going to check my location. 
All right, make sure I got the right location. This was in my backyard and sometimes that GPS isn't quite accurate. Um, and I've actually set up a little boundary in iNaturalist around my property. So I really, I'm always wanting to make sure if I found something in my yard that it's you know, actually pulling in um, inside that boundary. Uh, so I go into the location and I you know, scroll to make sure it goes to the right place. If you took a bunch of pictures and didn't have service, this is how you would load them in here and then scroll around and click, yeah, this is where I was when I took that photo. Um, other information before you're gonna finish out this observation is you have your geo privacy. So is this gonna be open to the public or do you wanna keep this kind of secret? Captive or cultivated. So this is really important because this is, uh, the iNaturalist is intended for you know, naturally occurring um, species. So it, you, know, you don't wanna take a picture of a koi in a koi pond and add it to iNaturalist necessarily, or a picture of a rose bush or a crepe myrtle that has been planted. Um, if you do, uh, just make sure that you put that it is, you would change this to yes, that this is a cultivated species and that just filters some things out in the, on the iNaturalist side of things. But that is important to remember and Rachel will bring that up later because uh, it's a little bit different with Seek. Uh, and then there's projects that you can add your observation to. And so these are the projects that I have listed in my phone. Um, the Backyards of Florida, that's a Florida Fish and Wildlife project that they started. Uh, Shady Oaks, that's the project I started for my property. Um, uh, the David Marshall Demonstration Gardens, that's you know here where I am now. Uh, but there's these other collection projects like Appalachian Bees, which Rachel uh, got that going, and some other projects that just naturally kind of automatically pull your um, observation into. Once you're done there, you'll just hit share. Uh, and it's and it uploads. Um, other things when you're looking in your um, iNaturalist app, there's this activity bar and the activity button here that will um, show you how people are responding to your observation. So these folks have come behind me and said, yes, this is what you uh, found, I agree. And that's what brings it to this research grade where um, scientists then and researchers are then using this information. The cool thing, you can also comment. So sometimes people leave me comments. I think I found something here at the extension office where they wanted me to, uh, I found a, some type of caterpillar and some fella from, I don't even know what part of the world he was in, but he wanted me to um, raise it into the adult to help him figure out this range expansion or something or other. It wasn't there when I went back, but anyway, it's kind of neat because people will comment back and forth and let you know why they thought this or that. Um, the only thing left in the iNaturalist app to look at is this more button down at the bottom. Uh, and these are all the projects uh, that you have joined. Um, there's, you can look at projects that are featured. So they might be wanting you to participate in some particular project. And you can also look at nearby projects. So if you are somewhere and you're like, hey, what, what's around here? In addition to explore, there could be some nearby projects that you could um, uh, participate with or add to or contribute to. Uh, really quickly, because I think I'm, I'm, I'm going a little over for you, Rachel, the desktop application. So you, everything I just showed you was on the phone, uh, but you can then log in online. And uh, there's a little bit you know, more things you can do online. There's this whole community and a forum and a blog. And uh, you can make lists, you can journal, you can you know, you can do all sorts of things on the desktop application as well that you can't do on your phone. Uh, and the other cool thing with iNaturalist is that it's not, you know, uh, it's not just experts helping identify things. You can go on and if you know plants or if you know animals, you know, I'm, I'm again, I'm a botanist, so I know plants really well. Um, you can go in and say, uh, show me all the plants in Leon County and you can, it'll pull up a list and you can go through and you can agree that this is uh, like Coca Lobo right there. That's Coca Lobo diversifolia. I know what that one is. I could go in there and hit agree or give it the name and that will help that person's ID get um, uh, kind of like uh, verified. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. off to you, Rachel. So Seek um, has been made and they made it as um, sort of a entry level or like a kid friendly version of iNaturalist. Um, some, uh, you know, over on the left part of the screen are, you know, what iNaturalist says about it. And then I wrote some of the uh, things after I've been using it and um, 
some of the things I've thought about it. So one, you know, it's a great, uh, great way to start, you know, finding out what's in your yard and what's out on a hike or, or things like that, because it's really quick. It's like a point and shoot. You just open up the camera and it will identify it uh, really quickly. Um, it, on the opposite side of that, if, you know, you're, you know, you really know your bees and you know it I, misidentifies the bee, there's no really way that you can go on and change the um, identification there. So it's, it's certainly an entry level tool, but it, it's still a lot of fun to use. Um, it doesn't have any login or account required. Um, it also does not record any of your data um, if you don't log in, um, which, which can be good uh, for certain people. And then you also don't need an internet connection um, to make it work. Um, let's see. It also doesn't contribute to research, but that's okay. Um, it uses all of this information, all the AI that Mark talked about um, to identify your um, specimens. And um, it's pretty intuitive and easy to use. There's not, you know, too much uh, to get lost in on it. Uh, the other thing I noticed, I went out in my yard and I took a bunch of bunch of pictures because I, I wanted to get my next badge. And it can take up a lot of storage if you're taking a bunch of pictures because it does save them directly to your phone. All right, go ahead, Mark. Okay, so this is what you see when you open up um, your app and we're gonna start with, similar to Mark, we're gonna explore what's around us and it, uh, we will um, go ahead and go forward, Mark. Yeah, so we have, let's say we wanted to learn about the green anole. Um, keep going. And it'll pull up. Now, when I was growing up, we had these things called zoo books, and you would um, get a little, a little uh, section about each animal, and you could collect them all. And it would take years to get, you know, all the animals in an ecosystem. But this is like a computer phone version of zoo books. It's pretty cool. So it's got, you know, some good information about your um, local animals, and then keep going. It's got your range map, which is really cool to see all of the iNaturalist entries. And then it's got the taxonomy. Uh, so you can see, you know, what kingdom and phylum and everything it is in. You can see the seasonality. So you can see, okay, they're really active in the spring, less active the rest of the year. And then it can show you similar species too. So you can really uh, get lost in there and uh, go down rabbit holes and, and uh, see related species. Um, Okay, so this is how you make your own observations. Uh, so you can complete challenges um, and earn badges, or you can just do it for fun. You can just uh, want to identify things in your yard because it's not um, recording these things for research. You can use it to identify your planted uh, gardens in your yard and that's okay. All right, go forward. So this will take a picture and it immediately, um, comes up, I've, I'm on my passion vine and it came up with the species right away. So I take that picture, go ahead. And then just like with the green anole on the previous slide, I could go ahead and go view species and it would show me all that same information, but for our passion flower. Um, all right, so now we're gonna look at, I think we're gonna look at challenges here. So there's all sorts of challenges that Seek puts out and they, it seems like they do one about every month and you can use this to really uh, get you started exploring. So it'll tell you maybe one challenge will be find six insects and three flowers in the aster family. And so if you don't know too much about the aster family, it might take you a little while to, to go about your yard, go about on a hike to really find all those uh, entries. Uh, you can see, you know, I'm 80% there on the backyard challenge. Um, sometimes they're, you know, find 10 unique species. It really depends. Go ahead. So we're looking at the resilience challenge. Find three birds. That's really what I'm missing because those birds keep going off so fast. And then the, the challenges also um, have these get involved sections. 
So um, this, this one I really liked. Uh, you can change the, and your settings on Seek, you can change it to be the scientific name. So if you were really um, interested in learning your scientific names, uh, you could change it on there to start practicing. Birds are hard to get pictures of, aren't they, Rachel? They really are. Yeah, they so really are. Yeah. Little wings, you know? Yeah. Um, so this is kind of like, uh, kind of like Pokemon Go. You know, you have badges for the number of species you observe and the challenges you complete. You start with a bronze level, which is just one of, of that variety. So I've got a bird, I've got uh, an arachnid, I've got an insect, and I have a bunch of plants, of course. And I'm only two away from winning uh, my next badge and plants. Um, Good job, Rachel. And on and on. Uh, and oh. just, like, oh, just like with a naturalist, you can look back on your observations. You know, they're not gonna be saved off the device unless you're signed in. But if you wanted to, you know, look back on all the things that you've you've uh, tracked and that you've seen, you can certainly do that too. Okay, yeah, those birds are tricky. Um, so that was a very quick overview of how to use these two apps. You know, so now what you need to do, and you've been equipped, you know what they are, you know how to get them. They're both free, right? They're both go right on your cell phone. Um, so now it's time to get outside and start exploring. So um, you can start right in your own backyard. And so the, uh, you notice the project that I had up there was the Backyards of Florida. That was initiative by F uh, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission uh, to just encourage people to go outside. In Florida, you saw the biodiversity hotspot. We can just be in our backyard and have an amazing amount, you know, more diverse than you know, just in our backyard than if you went to a park, uh, you know, in the Midwest or something or other. So lots of stuff here right in your own backyard. And the scavenger hunt, so this is the um, scavenger hunt sheet that Emmeline put together. Uh, beautiful artwork, right? It's amazing. Um, she has uh, given you your own little uh, iNaturalist or Seek scavenger hunt to work on. Uh, once you have, you know, explored your backyard, uh, then it's, you know, time to check out some of those local natural areas. And I've got a, a resource in the uh, end of the presentation here. It's called Trail of Hassie. Hopefully uh, many of you have heard of that. Uh, that's put together by the county and the city's uh, GIS department. Uh, and it's a really great resource, um, map-based resource. You click on a park, you click on a trail, and it tells you how many miles it is, how easy it is. And um, it's a really great way to find new places and to go learn some new species. Um, you know, while you're out there exploring local natural areas, uh, you, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world today. Uh, so again, thank you for participating with us and giving us some of the bandwidth of this crazy world we're living in um, uh, tonight. Uh, thank you for being here. And, you know, you've heard about what has been happening. And, you know, last week, I believe there was a a fella who got called up by the police. Um, he was just out there uh, looking at birds. So uh, just while you're out exploring local natural areas, um, look out for you know all the humans around you and especially people of color and make them feel at home and make sure they're not being harassed. And you know we all uh, deserve to be able to be outside and enjoy nature. So uh, explore those local natural areas, encourage others. So share your observations, right? And that excitement. So um, again, if you're when Rachel comes in and she's like, oh my God, I just got a, I got that bird that now I got my badge. Um, you know, uh, share that excitement with others because then I might be like, well, I want to find that bird now too. You know, I want to get it on my list and get my badge as well. So share your observations and that excitement with others. And uh, Emmeline gave you some hashtags at the beginning. Uh, hashtag Leon County Library. I forget what they were right now. I'm sorry, Emmeline, but uh, I believe it's uh, Leon County Library, Leon County Extension. There's also this For Nature and also WFSU at Home. That's been a, a project of um, uh, our local uh, NPR station. So uh, trying to get folks um, kind of showing off what they're doing while they're kind of, uh, you know, stuck at home during coronavirus. So uh, sh get outside and then share what you're seeing with others. And then just some actions, some additional actions you can take to protect and enhance biodiversity. 
So, you know, considering the impacts of the products, the foods you buy, uh, where are they coming from? First off, do you really need that? Come on, really? Do you really need that new thing? Um, and then, you know, what went into making that product or what went into, pro you know, producing that food? Uh, reducing your waste, uh, less plastic. You know, it's hard to buy anything with plastic, but uh, try your best to uh, choose loose, less plastic. Compost, compost, compost. We love composting around here with worms, with whatever. Um, use brush piles, you know, let a little, little wild space, um, uh, you know, leave that little wild space in your landscape. Maybe add a little brush pile and you'd be amazed at all the things that will start showing up there. There's a brush pile in my backyard right now that the wrens absolutely love uh, because they're always kind of jumping around in there, uh, finding little critters to eat. And I know snakes are scary to most folks, but uh, those brush piles are really great places every now and again to push it over and see what's living down at the bottom. Maybe you'll see just a glass lizard instead. So the glass lizard, it looks a lot like a snake. It's actually a legless lizard. And it's called a glass lizard because that little tail can break off and shatter into pieces like glass. It's really cool. Uh, remove invasive exotics from your yard. Again, we talk a lot about that. If you got any questions, always contact us over here at the extension office. Uh, plant a garden for you and or the wildlife um, and reduce use of pesticides as much as you can. So uh, here's just some pictures. The one on the right is really recent and I thought that was perfect for planting a garden for you and or wildlife. So this is one of my tomato plants in the backyard and I have a cicada um, the leftover. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't actually know what that's called, but you know where the cicada hatched. Uh, that's its leftover of the of the pupa. Uh, I don't know if that's right. Anyway, uh, so, you know, leaving wild spaces there by the, the pond. Uh, that, that's the little no-mo zone that was set up around Pedrick Pond. Uh, and you can go out there and you can see dragonflies, wildflowers. Uh, who knows what kind of fish uh, is living down at the base in, in the water there, using that for cover and habitat. Uh, the little picture next to the no-mo sign, um, that is a, this is trying to address the whole reducing your pesticide use. So that is a caterpillar covered in these little um, cottony looking things. And those are actually um, parasites. So that's a parasitic wasp species that has actually laid its eggs in the caterpillar. Uh, and those uh, little baby wasps are eating the caterpillar for food until they hatch. Uh, it's kind of gross, uh, but I think it's really cool. And that's uh, one of the reasons you don't want to use, um, or you want to reduce the amount of pesticides as much as possible because you want to encourage those beneficial organisms to help you with that pest control. Uh, composting, and there's a, a nice brush pile there. So uh, resources, and I think I made it on time for you, Emmeline. Amazing. So uh, resources, the, a lot of those maps came from the Biota of North America program. If you're a plant geek, uh, you will love going to that website. Um, biodiversity mapping, that is a, a lot of those, um, all those non-plant maps I showed came from the biodiversity mapping website. And that is a project of some graduate students who uh, were just amazed of, you know, the biodiversity of their region and they put together a, a website for you to check out more and it's a international collaboration. Um, iNaturalist, of course, we talked a lot about and they have some really good tutorials. So go to their help um, section on the, on the website. They have a lot of great video tutorials. Um, there's stuff specifically for teachers on how to help teachers use this in classrooms. Uh, there's our Trail of Hassie, uh website that I mentioned. So that is through the city and the county's GIS department. And it's just a really nice looking, easy to use website. And then of course, our UF IFAS Florida Friendly Landscaping Program. So again, big part of our job over here is to promote landscape practices that, you know, create beautiful gardens, but also uh, help, you know, try to consider natural resources, wildlife, um, and just sustainability in general. So with that, uh, I, I ended it. Did you guys see the question there? You guys see the link to the question with the picture there? Rachel, you see it? Uh, I see the question. Yeah, contact information. No, no, there's a there's a question mark on the butterfly. Oh, awesome. oh. That? Isn't that cool? Because <laughs> it's the question mark butterfly. Yeah. Um, okay, well, um, 
I think that was it. So question, do we have any questions, Emmeline? Um, we had one question, but it was answered. Um, it was about going back and editing um, the things that you've captured before, um, if it was something that was actually not, you know, in nature. Um, and the answer is yes, you can go back and edit. Um, thanks to Rachel. <laughs> it's yeah, I, think, I think you can do that on your phone and on the, on the desktop application as well. So all of those um, observations, if you click on them, uh, you can edit whatever you'd like about them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, you guys. Um, this has been really informative. I'm really excited to go out and do it myself. Um, yeah. I figured the last little section of this um, presentation, we would go over how to find books about um, local biodiversity um, at the library. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Stop, you want me to stop my share? Yes, and I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. Um, let's see. And I Here guess if anyone else has uh, questions, um, feel free to let us know. Okay, yes, please put them in the chat. So um, when you are on our library homepage, which um, when you're on our online catalog homepage, um, Oh, you can do this from your phone with our library app, or you can do it on um, the homepage or on the catalog homepage, which I am here first. Um, so this homepage um, is the place where you can type in anything that you want up here in the far top. So let's see, I'm gonna, just going to do diversity um, thing that comes up. Search that comes up is documenting biodiversity, which is a great courses, which are all um, free to play during coronavirus time. Um, you can play it from home. You can um, screen, uh, put it on, um, stream it on your screen. Um, and it's through our e-video resource called Canopy. And all it is, is it's a guide to la landscape and wildlife photography. So when you find those cool things in your yard, by all means go out and now you know, now you can learn how to do it even better. Um, we also have a lot of um, field guides, like Mark was mentioning, um, and uh, the best thing that I've found for this is to go into a branch of the library and go to the section in the library that has this stuff, because you're always going to find something there that didn't come up on a search online. Yeah, that's what I do. Um, I go to that section of the library and just, and just like hang out <laughs> on the floor and open up the book. Yeah, and just go nuts. <laughs> Yes, um, and right now the library, today was our first day, the libraries are now open to the public to come inside um, with a lot of limitations and restrictions and we are um, uh, making sure to keep everyone safe during coronavirus, but you can actually come in to browse. Um, and so you can actually come in and check out the sections as well as um, looking online beforehand. We also have a local author named Carol Hare Moore and I'm going to switch over to her. To, and she does an entire book series where she has um, local animals that go on adventures. Um, and these are books meant for children. Um, and they uh, feature a local artist. Um, uh oh, my internet connection is unstable. <laughs> um, but the she and she's read a couple of these books on our Facebook page um, that you can go back to at any time to look at and view with your kids. Um, and she's absolutely lovely. She's like everybody's grandma <laughs> and her house is so wonderful. Um, but these, this whole book series is called I Wish You Ice Cream and Cake and they feature all of these really cool animals. So we have also local authors that write about um, local biodiversity and um, make it in, in a format that's easily accessible to people of all ages. So you can search on our catalog, place things on hold, um, get more details before you actually do them, watch videos online from your house, um, read books and listen to audiobooks from your house. Basically the library is trying to bring as much of our, our services as we can home to you guys when um, we're all trapped in our houses due to coronavirus. So um, if Emily, any, there's a there's a question. Yeah. This is only for, um, oh, I think Britain just answered it. Yeah, the, uh, if you're out of Leon County, uh, mm -hmm. Do you have access to Leon County Library services? Um, some of our services you do have access to, um, but we, you can sign up for a library card, um, a paid card um, that lasts for a certain amount of time online. So you'll be able to use it no matter where you are. You can sign up no matter where you are um, to use a, um, a card 
Um, if you don't live in Leon County, it's only free for Leon County residents. Um, okay. um, so we do have an option. <laughs> Maybe not the not a free option, great. but it is an option. I didn't know that was possible. That's great. <laughs> yes, we just started right before um, the library closed to the public. We um, just started doing online library card sign up. So we were so happy to have that already up and rolling by the time that the library shut down. So um, let's see if we've got any other, I'm gonna go ahead and I guess, let's see if there are any other questions in the chat. Let's see, any questions on any of the terms I used? Anybody wanna go mm -hmm. back and look at some of those maps more closely? I love maps, I could look at them all day. If you go to the, uh, the Biota of North America program website, I mean, the maps just keep going and going and going. You just scroll and scroll and scroll. It's pretty amazing. All right. Well, I, it's there's almost a, right at six o'clock. Yeah, go ahead, Brayden. Yeah, there's ahead. a participant. <laughs> Wayne has his um, hand, mm -hmm. hand up. Right, Wayne, are you able to use the chat? Do you have a question or is that? It looks like we can allow him to talk. Should I hit allow to talk? Sure. Go for it. Wait, Wayne, you still there? Hmm. Let's see, unmute. No. Well, Wayne, if you can, you can type it into the uh, into the chat box there. How can we make our own yard a project? Uh, just came in. So that one. That one is a little tricky. We got four minutes. Um, it's a really good video. Where they, where is, Peter Kleinhens goes through the process. Let me find that real quick and I'll I share. I think, uh, yeah, I don't have that link yeah, ready to go gonna, right away, gonna, but you can't, uh, you do have to do that on your, on your desktop application. Um, you would go into projects and I think you would create your, uh, your own new original project. And they give you a way to either like type in a name of a location, or you can go in there and actually draw a little square polygon, you know, around your property line. So you can zoom all the way in, you can, you know, draw your little square. And then every time you, um, you know, take an observation within that location, it'll, you know, add it to your project. Mm -hmm. But you do, if you are trying to keep track clear of everything that you're finding, make sure you go into the location because uh, at one point I was trying to see how many I had. And I was like, wait, I know I've got more observations than that in here uh, because sometimes your G your GPS is a little off. So it was like, you know, in the neighbor's property, you know, all around me. So I had to kind of bring them in. But it's, it's not too bad. You can figure it out. You got it. We have another question that says um, from Lisa. She wants to know if you provide local school programs when schools are in session. We sure do. Yeah. Uh, either 4-H, you know, Rachel's um, oversees the 4-H horticulture program. Um, and I know there's a couple schools that she's involved with uh, for vegetable gardening. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they do gardening exercises. Uh, there's our four, there's our whole 4-H section here that uh, could also be a resource and there's also our uh, uh, food food and nutrition program I, I, I can't remember if it's family or food I know it's an F <laughs> our food and nutrition program um, actually does go into local schools and um, provides um, nutrition education so uh, but yeah we uh, we go to schools uh, I love talking to kids about uh, these things yeah uh, we so also we, we have some field trips at our office too. We've got big gardens, you know, under normal circumstances, of course. Uh, we've got big gardens, lots of vegetable uh, plots, and lots to snack on on the, on the uh, field trip. And the library, when we um, host programming inside of the library, we do also partner with UFIFS for the Grow Healthy, Eat Healthy workshops where we cook food and um, you get to learn about growing your own food um, in the healthiest way possible. Um, so hopefully when we are offering programming that is inside the library, we will start to do that again, which was always really fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Chelsea comes in there and cooks for you and it's amazing. Chelsea's a great, uh, yes. great. Well, so good. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, thank you both again you. for joining us on a Friday. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, and Don't thank you guys so much. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys have something to do on the weekend. You can go outside and explore and um, get all sorts of, get your, get your phone with you and um, yeah. get outside. Um, yeah. Hopefully it'll be beautiful this weekend for you guys to explore with. And thank you guys so much for attending. Um, I hope you guys have a great night. And um, I guess we'll end See you here. next time. Yeah, see you next time. Bye, <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>